Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at BS951 clamps, which are these things. And uh, these things are used to connect bonding conductors to metallic pipes, things like gas, water pipes and whatever else. And uh, various sizes and types available. And point to note, these are not suitable for connecting to cables, even though uh, they have been used for that in the past by various people. So uh, let's have a quick look at these and see how they're actually used and also uh, sort of different types and things you can actually get. And now this is a BS951 clamp, and the purpose of these is to attach, via the thing on the front here, your bonding conductor to a metallic pipe, such as a gas pipe or water pipe or whatever else. And uh, these are pretty much how these are packaged, so it just comes in a uh, box or bag or whatever. And uh, I've got this warning label here, which just uh, slides over that piece. But uh, these slots are not to be used when it's actually put on there. That's just for packaging purposes. When you actually use these, the uh, holes there are what you use. It goes over the thing we've got on the end there. Now this particular one has a blue screw there. Various colours are used by various manufacturers, mainly to determine whether it's useful to be used in a wet or damp environment, or whether it's just used in a dry environment inside. Some have colours, some don't, and uh, there's various colours used, but uh, suffice to say, if you're going to buy these, you might as well get the ones that are suitable for a damp environment, because cost-wise there's virtually no difference between them. So, uh, fairly simple in operation. This uh, piece here is what goes around your pipe, goes back in there. Screw on the front here tightens down, which uh, clamps it onto the pipe securely. And then your bonding conductor attaches to this screw on the front here. Now this particular one, if I look on the top there, and you see it's marked there A to D, and there's various other letters including E, F and upwards, and the point of this is it shows what size of conductor you can actually attach to the terminal on this one, A being the smallest, and it actually goes all the way up to I, which is the largest. And have a look in this table, this is actually from BS951, and we can see that A, the smallest size is 2.5mm squared conductors, and D is 10 millimeter square conductors. A to D is the uh, most commonly available because most bonding conductors tend to be around the 10 millimeter squared size. The smaller ones are permitted. But important to note, if you've got one that says A to D, it is not suitable for things of 16 millimeter squared and above. If you want to connect those two things, then you will need to buy one of these, which are E, F, and G, and so on. And of course, those are available from uh, the usual places. And here it goes up to where I, which will be a 70 millimeter squared conductor. Now when you actually fit these things, the uh, first thing to do is to remove the label from here, because that's just for packaging, it doesn't uh, actually go on that way when it's in use. And on the front here we've got the uh, screw there, which is where the conductor would actually attach. This uh, has a lug on the end. This one's red, which I believe signifies uh, dry areas only. The blue one is supposed to be for damp environments, but some manufacturers actually make green ones, and some manufacturers don't put any colour on them, so just check with whatever you're purchasing at the time. And uh, to fit these, uh, basically the screw there goes into the slot in the middle. So once this piece actually goes around the pipe and through the middle there, when you tighten it down, that will force its way down into the middle of these two strips of metal, pull them inwards, and of course tighten that up at the same time. So uh, first thing to do is just remove this completely, because it needs to go through the hole in this label. To move the nut up to the top there, so that goes through like that. And then we can just put that back into the central hole. But uh, we need to put it in only a short distance, so we've actually got a space there to feed this around the other side. And we uh, need a piece of pipe, got a short piece here, which is 22mm, uh, because it says so right there on that label. This is copper, commonly would be used for water or heating or gas supplies in UK properties. Obviously it's just a sample, but uh, basically the deal is you can uh, place this around the pipe there. This piece, uh, so just bend that around there, thread it through the slot on the front there, and then you want to pull that pretty much as tight as you can all the way through the hole there. Obviously this is easy when it's uh, actually attached to uh, the rest of the structure there. And once you've got it reasonably tight on there, you want to tighten this down, and then that will start to sort of bite into the metal in the middle there and it would actually start to pull in the two sides. So as this tightens down, the actual strap around the pipe will get considerably tighter. 
and if I tighten that down to a decent force, you can now see that it's pulled against the pipe all the way around there. And if I have to try and move that, it's uh, pretty much solid on there. If it isn't, then you've either not tightened it up enough or you didn't pull this through far enough to start with. So bear in mind, this has only got a certain range that it can pull in, so if you put it super loose to start with, well, it's going to obviously remain that way pretty much forever. So label is uh, obviously loose at the moment, but of course we need to connect our uh, conductor to the screw here. So we'll just uh, undo that. Now there's a couple of ways you can connect to this. The shoddy way is to just take the end of the copper there and then just uh, strip off the end and then just bend it around and underneath the washer head there. That's all very well, but uh, obviously not really the uh, best choice. A more chromodent method is to uh, take that out completely and put a lug onto the end of your conductor. This is just some random uh, used piece from somewhere. The screw goes through there. And then of course you can just put that back in to the hole. And again, that just needs to be tightened down to a uh, sensible tightness. There isn't any torque actually specified for these in the standard, but uh, obviously you want to make sure it's good and tight on there so it's not going to be uh, coming off and uh, flapping around. So you can just put the wire around there, but uh, say that's not really uh, as good as uh, doing it with a lug there. But uh, if necessary, you can do that. I'd suggest putting it up one side and down the other and coming up the bottom. Don't, if you can avoid it, put it up sort of both sides with a split, because the trouble with that is this only needs to loosen off a tiny bit and you can only just pull the wire straight out. So if there is no lug, say put it up one side all around the other side and perfectly come out the other side a bit. And then you're actually tightening down onto the whole area of that rather than just relying on little pieces sticking up either side. Now the next thing to do is just secure this label and also this uh, lock nut here. Now a couple of choices here. You can just sort of position this sort of this way if you like or up this way here. Some people like to actually put it over the top of the uh, screw there because that obviously avoids uh, disconnecting it without actually either bending the label out of the way or doing whatever. Because again, do not remove the idea is you don't want to be disconnecting this without uh, knowing what you're actually doing. So put it over the top of there like that and just get some pliers there and just uh, cinch that nut down onto there. Normally do it a bit more tighter than that. And then that secures that label in position and so locks those threads to uh, avoid them coming undone accidentally. So that's pretty much the installed clamp there. And then the other end of this obviously would go to another one or your earthing terminal or whatever else you're connecting to. Now this is a copper pipe here. These can be used on steel, which you often find on say gas supplies, uh, quite often done in steel or in some older buildings it may be the uh, water supply there. These are not suitable for use on cables of any kind. Unfortunately some people do like to use these on armoured cable, think it's a good idea just to uh, strip a bit of the armour and then just tighten this down. Completely inappropriate because armoured cables have a fairly soft material inside. If you tighten this down it's going to apply a load of force there and it will crush the outer covering which will result in a poor connection for a start and also could damage the conductors inside. The other place you tend to see these used completely inappropriately is on incoming supplies, particularly on smaller domestic ones where you've got your lead uh, sheathed cable coming into the property and you've got one of these stuck around the lead covering with your main earth connected to it. And again the same problem really applies in that these provide a huge amount of clamping force when they're tightened up properly and again that can crush and uh, deform the cable causing a fault and if that's on an incoming supply at 100 amps it's 100, 100 amps after the connection the thing going out into the street may be sort of 400 amps 800 amps or even uh, no fuse at all so if that gets tightened down and crushes the cable there's going to be an explosion and a big fire so definitely not an appropriate thing to use there and uh, certainly something to be avoided and also you shouldn't be attaching stuff anyhow because that's not the uh, property of the uh, actual owner of the building. It belongs to the distribution network operator. So fine for metallic pipes of uh, most types but definitely not suitable for cables. And the other thing to watch out for is on uh, certain older gas supplies there's a lead piece between the gas meter and the rest of the gas installation. And again this is not really the sort of thing you want to be attaching to that. Lead is a relatively soft metal so uh, something you want to avoid there. So hard copper pipe work or steel or something like that fine but other things uh, beware because crushing and damage obviously can occur. 
Now these things are generally one use, so once they've been put on the pipe you don't generally uh, want to reuse them, and the reason being is that once it's in the middle, see it actually deforms the metal tail quite considerably, and that's what's basically pulling those two sides together as you're tightening down the screw, so it just sort of presses down in the middle and uh, deforms it. It also does the same for the other side, so it does pull in from both sides. So once you've used it, although you can take them off, you're going to have that big deformed dent in the middle there, so not really something you want to be using more than once. Now the other limitation of these things is the length of this piece. Now this is fairly standard, sort of length, fairly short, and let's see if we bend that round there, that's about the biggest size of pipe there it's going to fit round, so relatively small there. But of course some pipes things are considerably larger than that, so if you need to put around a larger one, don't be tempted to get, say, two of these and sort of thread one here and put the other on the other end and have a sort of double-sized one, because then you're going to have to tighten it down from two places. And the problem also with that is that uh, it doesn't actually comply with the test in BS951 either, which basically is to put this around a sort of a mandrel in a test jig, tighten it down to a specified torque, and then uh, it tries to rotate with a certain amount of torque applied at the end, and uh, if it rotates it's a fail, and if it doesn't it doesn't. So although it might be tempting to put two of these on there, that is not the uh, correct procedure. If you've got a larger pipe then the obvious answer is simply to buy a longer one. So uh, exactly the same idea here, same uh, deal on the end, only difference is this bit's much longer. So once you've put that around, of course, that's going to go around a much larger diameter pipe there, compared to obviously this uh, rather small one. And these are again readily available from the usual places. They're not particularly expensive either, so uh, if you want uh, larger pipes then just get a larger clamp like that. Now BS951 only applies to this particular type of clamp and the uh, little labels that go with it, but there is another place that uh, it is actually mentioned. So in the uh, Requirements for Extra Installations, we have 7671, that's just the blue one currently in force here. If you have a look here in the uh, Warning Notices section, nothing of bonding conductors, a durable label to BS951 with the words Safety Electric Connection Do Not Remove shall be permanently fixed in a visible position at or near, and then there's various choices we've got there. First of all, the point of connection of every earthing conductor to an earth electrode, the point of connection of every bonding conductor to an extraneous connective part, and that's basically where these things come in as it's connecting it to your gas, water and other types of things. And also the main earthing terminal where separate from the main switch gear. So if you put a little sort of earthing block separate and then you've got the uh, various conductors going off to your consumer unit or switch gear, whatever else you've got, then you do need to put a label there and it's the same one which complies with BS951. So in theory you could stick one of these on your main earth terminal if you want to buy these separately, which yes you can buy these metal things separately if you want. More usually it's going to be something like this, which again has the same wording on there. It's just a self-adhesive one, this particular example. Now you can buy these in a whole variety of different places and they're various styles. Some have a green symbol on and some are sort of horizontal and some are vertical like this one. Now the only thing in BS951 which actually defines this, apart from the words themselves, is the height of the lettering. And it just says the lettering needs to be at least two and a half millimetres high. So it doesn't actually matter particularly what the uh, other factors on there. It doesn't say it has to be yellow, it could be any colour you want really, as long as those letters are two and a half millimetres high or more. And if you look at these particular ones we can see that those are sort of in the region of about four millimetres, so again absolutely fine there. This metal one we had earlier, again sort of four millimetre sort of size once again. So actual style of the label isn't specified, it is just the side of the writing on it. So that's BS951 clamps, connecting to metallic pipes only, not suitable for cables or plastic pipes obviously because those are insulating so no point. And if you've got a metal pipe make sure it doesn't have any paint or other things on the outside because of course that's also an insulator which would result in it not making an electrical connection. And just a final warning about gas supplies, you may come across something called track pipe, a TRAC. That is a thin wall pipe and it generally has a yellow plastic covering over the outside. It's fairly flexible, and although it is metal, do not attempt to attach one of these to it. First of all, of course, it has a plastic covering, so that wouldn't do anything anyway. But uh, don't remove the plastic covering and clamp this on the thing underneath, because it's extremely thin wall, and if you put this on there it will crush the pipe and cause a gas leak. So uh, that particular stuff, not suitable for that. You want to attach it to the hard copper or steel piping. 
rather than any sort of flexible bits or say, that lead stuff which you'll see on older installations. So that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.